Good evening and welcome to the uh, September 15, 2022 Johnson County Community College Board of Trustees meeting. I'd like to call the meeting to order and invite all of us to stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. A roll call yields that I believe all trustees are, are present. Uh, Trustee Greg Musel is uh, present by, via Zoom. Uh, so we have all seven trustees in attendance. The next item on our agenda is the awards and recognition section. I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Andrew Bown. Well, thank you. And as always, it's, uh, we enjoy starting the meeting with a student speaker. And so tonight um, we have Chris Arazo with us. And Chris, would you like to come up and, and introduce yourself? And, and I'm sure the trustees will have a few questions. Alrighty. Uh, just before I start, I just started my public speaking class, so I'm going to try to use some of that. I'm going to try to use some of that stuff definitely today to see if we can uh, get this to be a little easier than it is. Uh, but just to start off, my name is Christopher Alias Arazo. I am a second year student here at Johnson County Community College. Uh, but my first year here was definitely a learning experience, to say the least. Uh, growing up, I was told that finance is where the money is at. Uh, so of course, when it came time for me to pick a degree, I said, I'm gonna do finance and I'm gonna get that money, right? Um, but a little fact about me is I hate math. Uh, so if you don't know, that was a, a really bad uh, mixture, of course. So during this last summer, I had a lot of time to sit down and evaluate myself about what my true passion is and what I wanted to be remembered for. It was here that I started my photography page, Brown Boy Media, and also on Facebook and Instagram, uh, where I actually started to show off Chicano art uh, through photography and videography. It was this way I was able to show off my culture in a positive aspect. I mean, a lot of aspects of my culture being Chicano was very negative, uh, so it was a really big thing for me to show the beautiful side of my culture. It was through this that I ended up changing my degrees completely. So I went from finance to doing film and media, uh, which is kind of a big jump, no correlation, of course, but um, I'm so far really enjoying that. Um, with my main goal being that one day I'll be able to make documentaries about Chicanos and about inspirational stories and of course showing off the beauty of my culture. The first time that I got to show off the beauty of my culture, even though I keep on saying that, uh, was going to be the Aletha Leadership Lower Rider Bike Club. Uh, so I was lucky enough to start my freshman year. Uh, what it is, if anybody who doesn't know, it's an after school program where a lot of the Aletha school kids are able to meet up. We build lower their bikes, we bring them to shows, we show them the beauty of our culture. And of course, we also go there to break stereotypes. Um, so we actually also teamed up with the Aletha Police Department there. Uh, so much, uh, we built a good connection so much so that we actually built a full size Crown Vic lower their car. Uh, that actually sits at the station. It's super awesome. A lot of people take pictures while they're driving it with a cop driving it, which seems a little sketchy, but I mean, I guess it doesn't matter, right? Uh, but it is a super amazing club. I loved it so much that after I graduated that I actually went back to become a mentor there. Uh, so that's where I go every Monday from three to five. If you guys are ever interested, I'll be there mentoring kids, not only how to build bikes, but also how to build relationships and be a better person overall. But I was so involved in the Aletha community that I realized I was missing out on my own community. Um, another fact about me is that I'm actually, I actually live in Lawrence. Uh, so I actually take the, K the K-10 connector all the way down here every day for school, uh, which is definitely a trip. It's about 45 minutes. But um, I realized I wanted to do something over there. Uh, so me and a couple of my homies being Clifton Radon, uh, what is it, Mike Cox, and then also TJ Jones, of course my dad Eric Arazzo and I, we started the Lawrence Cruisers. It's spelled Lawrence, but with an O, so low rinse, just a little <laughs> a cool thing. Uh, so what it was, was all of me, it was me and all my friends who all have low riders, we would team up once a month and we would actually uh, not only have a car show in the morning, very similar to like a Cars and Coffee every Saturday morning, we'd also meet with the captain of the police department to talk about certain issues in our community and how we could resolve those. Um, but at the same time, at those car shows, you would see a whole bunch of lowriders with, of course, a cop car right there, being another example of how breaking stereotypes is a huge thing to me. Um, even if somebody didn't show up, just driving by that is such a good thing to see, um, and it's crazy how much that can uh, make a change in your community. And then after that, I realized I was going to school here, and I was so involved in Lawrence and Aletha, I wasn't even involved in my own school, right? I'm like, that's, a, that's definitely an issue. Uh, so that's where I found out about Luna. Uh, Luna is Latinos United now and always. Um, it was here when I was first just a person that was watching. I really enjoyed it. Uh, we got to show off all the stuff. We would have quinceaneras and all that type of stuff out in the comms or anything like that. So have you guys ever seen that? Uh, but something that my dad always told me, if you want to make a change, you have to be at the table making it. 
right? So that made me uh, get motivated to actually become part of the leadership team. Uh, so I'm actually the secretary over there. Um, and recently, this last Monday, I actually threw my first event. And of course, me being super Chicano and being super into lowriders, I got four lowriders to show up on campus. Um, and they all showed, uh, showed up. Big, uh, big shout out to Juarez Car Club for sure for showing up and doing that. I mean, it was just a really, really amazing thing for me to be able to see a whole bunch of lowriders showing up to a community college in Overland Park. Like, that's, that's such a crazy thing that nobody would ever think would happen, but man, was it, it was beautiful. And I mean that. And even um, if you guys look at fads, you can see all the lower to bikes over there. That's from the Olathe leadership. Man, that almost brought me into tears, y'all. I'm being for real. Like, that was so beautiful to see that my college that I go to is so appreciative of who I am and my culture and not looking at it in the negative aspect that a lot of people do. So uh, with Luna, we actually just started uh, a new thing that we're trying to fundraise some money. Uh, we're actually teaming up with HDF, which is the Greater Kansas City Hispanic Development Fund, uh, to help raise money for Hispanic students here on campus. So I'm going to hand these out real quick. I know I'm one of those dudes. I'm sorry, guys. But I got to get my money. That's you do it. <laughs> hey, I got a little notes for Irby over here. Did I get two? Yep, that's all right. Thank you. Uh, 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 thank you, sir. You're doing great with the public speech. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you, guys. We got a lot of jersey, by the way. Appreciate it. Told you. All right, so that's about it for my presentation. Uh, just to, so you guys can get a quick glimpse on who I am and what my main uh, things are about me. So, yeah, that's about it that I have to say. So, well, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, any questions? Uh, for Christopher. I, I, have, I have a couple of questions. Yeah. Um, Trustee Raton. Do you know uh, Martin Cervantes? He's I doing, do. He's doing the same thing over. I want to make sure you guys were connected. Yeah, yeah, he was actually a chapter off of this one. And actually, we just met with anybody knows Diana Munoz. Uh, we're actually starting another chapter and actually KC uh, Mo as well for that by club. Yeah, so, yeah, I love what you're doing. I talked with him a while, and um, the students have to earn customizations for their bikes, the better yep. that they do. I love that there's some incentive program it's, with it. And then are you participating in the Latino Arts Fest that's going on here on the 20th? Yes, I am. What will you be doing? Um, so actually, I'm going to be a vendor there. Uh, so, you know, I thought it was about time that I man up and start uh, doing some real stuff with my photography. So I'm actually printing out a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and then selling that there. And just on the topic about earning it, another interesting fact about our bike club, at least the one in Olathe, um, so it's usually with Hispanic kids, it started off with like a little more troubled Hispanic kids. We actually have a 100% graduation rate uh, with that club. And along with that, we're about a 50-50 split uh, with the bike club. So even with boys and girls, which is, is super amazing to see that. So yeah, appreciate it, thank you. Thank you, Trustee Rattan. Trustee Greg Musel. Uh, I just, it's not a question really, Chris, I just want to say that how glad I am that I'm not in your public speaking class because you just blew the top off the curb. curb. Uh, thank you very much for your time today. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Musil. Trustee Hamill, did you have something? Oh, no. I'm sorry. Who else had something? <laughs> Trustee Costa. Thank you. Thank you, mm -hmm. uh, Chairman Lee. Uh, I am so impressed, Christopher. And I have to tell you that you would be uh, any public speaking instructor's dream student. <laughs> I, I appreciate taught, it. I taught public speaking for 20 years, yeah. uh, both here and at other universities, and my goodness, you are well ahead of the curve. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a message, you come prepared, uh, you, your delivery is great, and uh, I, I mean, this is like the icing on the cake <laughs> to come and like make an ask and <laughs> prepared. So uh, good for you. I'm real proud of everything you're doing, and I hope you just continue in your leadership roles here at the college. I appreciate it so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Trustee Laura Smith Ever, and happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, happy, if I'm going to mess it up, Dia de la Septiembre. Do you celebrate? Uh, it's the Hispanic Heritage Month yeah, or just the, the Independence Day? Yeah. Well, so, I, I, my, I teach at a school not far from here, and the majority of my students are Latino. Mm -hmm. And if you could, if I could grab you and bring you to my school, you would inspire all of them um, with how proud you are of your culture, mm -hmm. how much you've embraced leadership in so many facets, because culture is more than just <coughs> its leaders, it's also its art, mm -hmm. and it's food, and it's um, fun, and you clearly are dipping your toe in each one of those elements and doing what seems like a fantastic job um, running right to the front. So thank you for being such a good model. Um, and I think a lot of times that um, I get sad for my own students, 
that they don't know as much about themselves and their culture <clears throat> as I want them to because they're multi-generations in to mm -hmm. being in the States. And the fact that you've embraced it and that you do a lot to help other people understand and embrace it just speaks volumes. So when you go out into the world, you're going to be so much more than all the boxes you mentioned and all the labels you gave us tonight. I just ask that you remember the little people and come back and visit us when you do. So yeah. you're going to be incredible. Thanks so much for yeah, coming. Thank you. Out. Thank you so much. I'll try to remember you. I'll, I'll see where I'm at. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I appreciate it so much. <laughs> thank you. Did you have anything, Trustee Ingram? No, I'm fine. Thank you. Mr. President. Chris, thanks so much for being here with us tonight. I believe, and, and I wouldn't expect you to keep track of him, but I understand you might not be the only Arazo who's speaking on campus tonight. Is that true? Yeah, no. Um, my dad, Eric Arazo, um, he's actually speaking at the, the Nerman later today, so that's where I'm going to be home. And he's actually talking about the beauty of low orders yeah. and his culture. So it's like a little mini, a lot of people call me mini Arazo, even though I'm like five inches taller than him, but that's okay. Uh, we'll, we'll let that slide, but yeah. Yeah, he is. <laughs> What is he speaking on? Sorry, I'm, I'm he's talking about uh, about the like art and low writing. Yeah. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we actually have a, a student display right now, right in the yep, in uh, Fads. Fads building, um, with low riders, um, and there is a highly um, uh, what adorned um, low rider um, in the Nerman uh, in the current exhibition. So adorned. So, That's awesome. Yeah. At the risk of my president cringing, um, the only person I have to compare to you in my mind is Leonardo DiCaprio in The Wolf of Wall Street, <laughs> which you should see uh, to learn a lot of lessons of what not to do. <laughs> uh, but at the end of that movie, um, after he's been disgraced and uh, blown through several fortunes, uh, he's teaching an audience how to sell a pencil. And I'd invite you to go watch that, because once you can sell someone a pencil, you can sell anything. And you have many of the tools, and then learning those basic skills and I have a background in sales myself, and you're, you're quite impressive. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for being here tonight. No, uh, do you have any questions it. for us before you go? Uh, no. I think that's all I have to ask. So I uh, appreciate you guys all giving me a moment of your time. I, I really appreciate it. What so. do we do with these now? Uh, you definitely read them and then donate money. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you very you. much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you again. Uh, the next item on our agenda is the open forum section of our meeting. Uh, the open forum is an agenda item at each regularly scheduled board meeting. Speakers wanting to make public comment via Zoom webinar must register by completing uh, the registration form by f below by 5 p.m. the day before the scheduled board of trustees meeting. Speakers must provide their name, city of residence, name of any group they are representing, the topic of discussion, and a brief one or two sentence summary of the presentation, as well as the email address and phone number the speaker will be using to access the Zoom meeting. The Zoom link and conference number will be listed on the JCCC Board of Trustees uh, meetings page. Registered speakers should be familiar with Zoom functionally before logging in to the Board of Trustees meeting. Terry Slish has said that to me m many times. Uh, registered speakers should wait until called by the chair to speak, at which time the recognized registered speaker will be granted access uh, to address the board. Speakers wanting to make public comment in person must register through this form by 5 p.m. the day before or in person 15 minutes before the start of the meeting outside of this room, GEB 137. Each registered speaker is allotted five minutes to speak. If there is a significant number of registered speakers, the chair will reserve the right to reduce the time of each registered speaker. When addressing the board, registered speakers should be respectful, civil, and are encouraged to address individual personnel or student matters directly with the appropriate college department. Personal insults, profanity, or language that is not appropriate to be aired live on television. Are we live on television? And the offensive comments, I'm just reading. I'm just reading. And the offensive comments based on protected status or class are strictly prohibited. The chair of the board has the authority to keep order and impose reasonable restrictions on any disruptive behavior of those participating in a board meeting. Thank you for your interest. The open forum speaker registration is <coughs> open. Do we, I don't believe we have anybody. We do not have anybody. 
Neither yeah. online nor we do not person. have anybody. Therefore, we are, the op open forum speaker registration is currently closed. And details uh, on upcoming meetings and registration availability can be accessed at the Board of Trustees page and the committee meetings page. I love reading all that. It's so great. The next item on our agenda is the Board Reports, a Student Senate Report by Mr. Daniel Gonzalez. Hello. My name is Daniel Gonzalez, and I'm the new, and I'm the new Student Senate President for the 2022-2023 school year. Um, uh, I would just like to start with saying my goals and mission for Student Senate here at JCCC. Um, during my time as president, at JCC, as the Student Senate President at JCCC, I plan to increase student involvement through funding and support of clubs to enhance the student experience. Um, the, next item on, the next item I have is uh, uh, the fall 2022 ele Student Senate election results are in. Our new, sec our new Student Senate Executive Board Secretary uh, is Mila Garza. And our new student senators are Yasin Ali, Nate Asafe, Dusty Cody, Drake Devine, Apuna Gonzalez, Fatima Gonzalez, Liz Hernandez Alman, Taylor Reese, Anthony Rima, Kinley Smith, Vishal Puri, and Braden Vinson. Uh, this creates total 20 senators, and including the executive board right now. Additionally, uh, the JCCC Smash Bros was approved by the Student Senate during our last General Assembly on September 12th. And Student Senate will be also hosting Trick or Treat for Kids this year on October 27th from 5 to 7 p.m. at COM 155. That's all I have. Did you say Smash Bros? Yeah, so the, that's, the, that's the new club that was recently approved by uh, Student Senate. What, what is that? Sorry? It's a, it's a game. It's like a, it's like a gaming club. I'm old. <laughs> Thank you for asking. Any questions <laughs> for Mr. Gonzalez? Trustee Bertin. Uh, uh, President Gonzalez, uh, Trustee Ingram, and I had the honor of attending your swearing in last week, and we really enjoyed seeing your leadership in action. Um, we loved seeing you initiate a new club in and your great questions from all the senators. So thank you for your leadership, and I truly enjoyed seeing you in action and, your, and the other senators. Well, thank you very much, uh, Trustee Raton and Trustee Ingram for attending uh, that General Assembly meeting. Any other questions for Daniel? Can I, say, can I do it without a question? Is that okay? I just welcome him. I, I recognize Trustee Smith there. Sorry, excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, welcome. Thank you for being stepping up in a leadership role, and we look forward to the many things that you're going to lead um, Student Senate on. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Mr. Gonzalez, thank you for coming. All right, thank you for being here. Good job. Thank you. Uh, next is my great pleasure, distinct privilege and honor to recognize our college lobbyist uh, who makes an in-person appearance for the first time. Surprise. Wow. What a time for me. <laughs> for the first time in the history of Dr. Bowne's presidency. You know, that is also not true. But you know, I am, um, I, I really wish we could change the order of the speakers because going after the students in person is one of the worst things that, that could happen to the, the speaker that follows them. But um, with students like Chris and Daniel, it's, uh, it's a privilege to be at the podium today, live and in person. Um, this is the 25th month uh, that revenues have exceeded expectations. It's also probably the 25th month um, that I haven't been in person uh, almost. Um, so I'm glad to be here. I would, I would expect that as we continue to watch revenues which help develop the state budget discussions that come uh, the end of December of this year, the picture is going to be a little bit different. Um, the revenue estimators will meet again in November to kind of take a picture of what their expectations are for the next, um, the next budget cycle. Uh, we do that in November and, and in April. And I think with the uh, reduction of food sales tax, the elimination of food sales tax in January, um, that, that picture is going to look a lot different uh, when, when those revenues start, start flowing in. The other thing to remember is the law changed this year on when retailers um, have to submit sales tax uh, receipts to the state. And so again, all of those things play with what the numbers look like as they come into the state's revenue coffers. I think we're going to have conversations about property tax caps 
uh, and property tax issues related to assessment next session. So again, I think that our, our trend of good news each month with receipts exceeding expectations are likely to become uh, a little bit more real uh, come, come the end of this calendar year as the state completes uh, or continues to move on through its <laughs> fiscal year. So that, that is good news, and I always start off my reports with sort of that budget picture of what things look like because it drives so much of the conversation in Topeka. Uh, three new regents were confirmed uh, this past uh, week or so. Um, it was, I think it might have been the week prior. Um, and uh, very little fanfare, very little, um, very little obstacles in the way of their approval. Uh, there was some discussion as to whether or not um, legislators would wait until after the election. Uh, we're very close to the election, and, and lots of times we start playing some of those political games with regard to appointments. That's a very um, sought after or, or highly regarded appointment. Uh, those, those regents were seated for the meeting this month, which occurred yesterday and today. And so I think we're in uh, good space with, with the three that were, were appointed. And I talked about this a little bit in last month's report. Mm -hmm. The funding task force for community colleges and technical colleges met a couple of weeks ago, and I included in my report, and I'm not going to go over them in, in detail, but it's some, a list of bulleted items that are recommendations that came out of that meeting, and uh, some that at least uh, bear watching, uh, because words matter when you're developing policy at the state level, is um, uh, things like, uh, and, and some of these are just regulations that can occur internally at the Board of Regents, but urging the Regents to look at a carrot approach instead of a stick approach for um, performance agreements. I think that's uh, incredibly important when we, when we look at how other institutions, um, what, what they use in their application of um, performance agreements or what, what they set as their goals. Uh, consider granting um, the Board of Regents authority to um, audit community colleges. Uh, prior to 1999, uh, or the year 2000, when Senate Bill 345 came into effect and brought all of higher education under the umbrella of the Board of Regents, um, the Board of Education had auditing authority. That became a, a conversation topic at this meeting. I don't know that that one goes anywhere, but it certainly bears watching. And then uh, one that I think is important um, for us, especially uh, as a um, border county uh, and, and as we watch what, what goes on in other areas of the state, um, review, review the statutes regarding residency requirements for community colleges. I think, too, as that conversation continues to move forward, that, that's always been a hot topic. But as we look at how to keep people in Kansas, that may be a simple one, especially for community colleges. The residency requirements are far less stringent uh, for the two years than they are for the region's institutions. So I think that's a conversation that could overflow into some other things once the legislature returns. Um, I'm not very good at being a stand-up comic, but today the Board of Regents met to discuss their unified budget request. Um, it's, it's very interesting the number that they came up with considering where the state is uh, in its financial picture and, and what we anticipate will be coming in the next few months. For as far as new dollars are concerned, um, the board is going to be requesting $250 million. That's, those are new dollars over and above um, what it already exists in the, um, in the budget that comes to the Board of Regents and then is dispersed to the various institutions uh, under their purview. Community colleges under this request scenario would see approximately a 13% increase or about $35.2 million. Some of those dollars are for uh, some budget errors that occurred last year for some things that weren't funded. Some of them will be uh, related to cybersecurity. Uh, that, that's a request that was made um, in a blanket manner uh, across the, uh, the higher ed system. Uh, usually that only pertains to the region's institutions as far as um, cybersecurity uh, grants are concerned. Um, salary help with high wage, high demand positions. Uh, and additional dollars for capital outlay for some institutions that maybe didn't see, uh, see that capital outlay that, that comes to them through, through the state. The regents portion uh, is, is the large portion, it's 225 million. I don't see that happening. Uh, I mean, we have to approach this with real eyes and real um, anticipation. Uh, that's an 86% increase uh, over, as far as new dollars are concerned. Uh, and then Washburn University, which is also in that, that mix of uh, 36 institutions, would be $1.5 million in, in new dollars. 
that whole conversation occurred today. It's interesting um, in and of itself. We'll see what happens as, as those numbers are, are um, further developed and forwarded to the governor's budget office uh, for the development of the um, FY24 budget. The Tech Ed Authority also met recently and had a conversation, and I don't think this is out there yet, uh, at least in, in, in any big terms. Um, they, they're looking at reducing some of the reimbursements for some of the nursing programs, anywhere from 60 to $120 per hour. Um, that's a big deal. That's a big deal for us. It's a big deal for any um, campus that has an allied health program. And so that's something that we'll, we'll be following as well as, as that conversation um, moves its way through. So I kind of started off with good news and ended with some not so good news. That wasn't my intention, but that's just the way the, the stuff rolls out. I think I would stop there, um, Trustee Cross, and see if there's any questions that I'm able to answer. Thank you, Mr. Carter. Any questions for Dick? Thank you. Trustee Ingram. With nursing considered high wage, high demand, how, how can they do that? seems kind of inconsistent with the recommendation for increasing the salaries for those teaching those programs, but then to pull back some of the money uh, on, the, on the reimbursement side. I don't disagree. I mean, if, that's... If I may, a follow-up to that point, are, aren't our medical providers at a shortage of, of nursing and other professionals? In many areas across the state, they are across the nation. Yeah. Uh, any other questions for Mr. Carter? And so the, their logic is what? <laughs> <laughs> Former Representative Coaston, no, we can't bring logic into the into the conversation. That that doesn't work well. Um, I, I I don't know. I mean, this is this is a good example of um, two entities within the same um, umbrella not talking to each other. Uh, and so that conversation, um, as as things get developed, that's that's just kind of how things unfold sometimes. And and um, yeah, I I can't I can't give a good answer to to that question. Well, I just wanted to say we appreciate your advocacy and certainly working with Heather Morgan and those across the state who can help influence and educate us so that our voices can be heard. We appreciate that very much. Thank you for the privilege. You're welcome. Uh, Greg, did you have anything? <clears throat> no. Nope. Uh, just a few points, if I may, Mr. Carter. Um, and you remind us to thank those taxpayers who so graciously part with their money and allow us to conduct their business. So we. We want to thank them, and that's actually a joke I use with some degree of success at dinner parties. So, um, twenty-five million dollars, the twenty-fifth consecutive month, is that is that a record? I don't know that it's a record. And again, we're we're talking about um, expectations, and so their their projections. Uh, you know, there were years when we weren't meeting the projections, uh, and it probably exceeded twenty-five months. Uh, some tough years starting in 2008. And, and so, you know, the, the pendulum swings both ways. And I certainly think it's good. We're, we're going to reduce the tax on food, correct? Correct. We don't have a replacement for that revenue, do we? Uh, no, that wasn't part of the package that was ultimately passed. Thank you. The, the regents were confirmed with uh, relative ease. Uh, was that expected? You never know what you're going to get um, when, when you're talking about confirmation oversight. The last group uh, had a fairly tough road to hoe. Um, this group seemed to, to move through. Uh, they still are subject to full Senate confirmation. They were, they were recommended for confirmation by the committee. Um, but but uh, when the legislature reconvenes in January for the next session, um, they'll be up on the calendar for, for full Senate confirmation. Thank you. What date was, was that group confirmed? Mm, it was on uh, the 6th. I think it was Tuesday after Labor Day. September 6th? Yeah. After August 2nd? Correct. Thank you for that. And can I ask one more? Trustee Coaston, yes. Um, so when, have they already been seated this week? Yeah, once, once they're confirmed by the committee, they can so go they, ahead and so they, were part they, of this, they assume those roles. Okay, so they were part of this last meeting? They were present for the meeting yesterday and today. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Trustee Ingram. But then they will be confirmed by the legislature. By the full Senate. By the full Senate. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Any other questions for Mr. Carter? Great to see you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> You're the life of the party. That's why I meant <laughs> Our next presentation is by the president of the Faculty Association, uh, Professor Brett Cooper. 
Good evening. Uh, last time we were here, the fall semester had not quite started. Uh, we are well underway. And uh, it's great to see everybody back on campus. Uh, we've got several exciting projects that are being led by faculty going on right now. Uh, Professor Jay Antle and uh, Professor Deb Williams are leading the annual Flint Hills trip August 1st and 2nd. Uh, open to all faculty and staff at the college. And it's sponsored by the Kansas Studies Institute, Department of Environmental Science, and the Center for Sustainability. At the end of the spring semester, uh, art history professor Allison Smith and her 20th century art history students organized an art exhibition and wrote all the wall text uh, for that exhibition that is occurring now at the Nerman Museum. The exhibit is entitled Aggregates of Time and ends on September 25th. So I, I encourage you to, uh, after this meeting is over, it sounds like there's a couple things to check out over at the Nerman tonight. Um, the English department has selected a book for their common read this year. Uh, the selected reading is Sitting Pretty, The View from My Ordinary Resilient Disabled Body by Dr. Rebecca Tossig, um, who is a KU graduate. The academic resource centers are seeing a resurgence in students this fall. Our faculty are doing a great job getting the word out to our students about the resources available to them to help them succeed with their studies. Although the current master agreement does not expire until uh, June 30th of, of 2024, I feel the need to give some reminders about negotiations. KSA 72-2218G defines professional negotiations as meeting, conferring, consulting, and discussing in a good faith effort by both parties to reach agreement with respect to terms and conditions of professional service. Subsection L goes on to define terms and condition, uh, conditions of professional service um, as salaries and wages, including the pay of duties under supplemental contracts, hours and work, amounts of work, vacation allowance, holiday, sick, extended, sabbatical, and other leaves, the number of holidays, retirement, insurance benefits, wearing apparel, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, until we get to the end of the list uh, where we find professional employment appraisal procedures. In 2019, the board established VERB retirement uh, benefit without going through the required negotiations. This summer, the board approved a procedure to convert sick leave to personal leave or a cash out option without going through the required negotiations. We currently have two task forces working on recommendations regarding retirement benefits and faculty evaluation that are nearing the end of their work. I simply want to remind the board that by Kansas statute, these are negotiable items and the Faculty Association expects them to be treated as such when the time comes later this year. Lastly, I would like to extend a thank you to the administration and board for bringing back the college picnic. Um, the last time it occurred was before my time here at the college. Um, I'm in my 10th year, so it's been quite a while. My understanding is that there have been over 1,000 RSVPs, and um, from all uh, tales I've heard, it is quite the event. As I've previously said, I think the opportunity we have uh, to come together as a community outside our job descriptions and to get to know each other as individuals goes a long way towards increasing morale and smoothing the path as we participate in problem solving within our jobs. I look forward to um, this campus-wide effort to uh, just kick back and have some fun. Thank you. Thank you, President Cooper. I apologize, I will not be able to attend tomorrow night. I've got a prior commitment. I, as do I. But I I've never <laughs> been to one, it's my ninth year. Any, any questions for Mr. Cooper, for Professor Cooper? Trustee Costa. If, if I could just broach a, a, what might be a touchy subject. Okay. Uh, how are the faculty responding to the news about Emporia State University? Um, so that just came out. I haven't had um, much in the way of face-to-face -face discussions about it. Uh, on social media, um, it was... Uh, there, there are a lot of people that are very upset. Um, there's uh, less concern than you might expect 
um, from our faculty uh, for two reasons. One, uh, tenure does not, uh, it's not something that we have at the community colleges. But two, in our master agreement, we have negotiated in it, the due process procedure if that is ever taken away. So we are um, locally uh, basically immune to any such moves. Um, but it is a worrying trend that is not just happening at Emporia State, but um, in several places across the nation. Any other questions for Mr. Cooper? Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes, Trustee Musil. Uh, I, I do want to say that we had an all-college all picnic, I believe, in 2019, mm -hmm. uh, because I was once again a volunteer for the Whack-A-Mole or as we can now call it the zap mole So I'm we have, sorry, we have had sorry. one. <laughs> we have had one recently, and I, I'm glad we're I'm glad we're we're having one again tomorrow night, where I will be at the zap mole between seven and eight p.m. Um, I suggested that if we had zap a trustee in charge for it, we could probably do a great job on our budget. Um, I, I do want to comment on on Brett's Brett's comments with respect to. The master agreement and collective bargaining. We've historically had a a, a, a tradition, I think, of avoiding uh, specific comments on the collective bargaining process uh, during the faculty administration, faculty association's president's report, uh, which I think serves us all well because I don't want to get in a back and forth, but I also don't want to leave the impression with any viewers that to the suggestion that we have violated Kansas statute or violated the master agreement because I simply don't believe that we have done so or that our legal staff or administration would allow us to do so. Um, so I wanted to make those comments. Uh, with respect to the Emporia State news, I, I wasn't aware of that until I just uh, Googled it after Trustee Coaston's uh, uh, comments or questions about it. and. What I, what I understand is that is basically a financial exigency plan when in funding is simply not uh, sufficient to continue to um, employ everybody that a, an educational institution employs. And I, I don't want to suggest that we are anywhere near that, but I watched that unfold in my year as student body president at Kansas State in 1979 and 1980 when enrollment was projected to go from uh, 15,000 to 12,000, and it was simply going to be impossible to continue the teaching and learning process in certain departments without a recognition of that. Um, so I don't want to uh, suggest we're near that, but I also don't want to suggest that there is never um, a need for uh, a recognition of the fact that enrollment reaches a point where uh, we have um, more employees and staff, including faculty, than we can support. I think our collective goal and inspiration and aspiration is to make sure we never get there and that we uh, turn around our enrollment issue um, and get control of our costs so we don't get there. Uh, that's all I have, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. Trustee. Any other questions for Professor Cooper? Uh, I would like to thank uh, Trustee Musil for his comments, and certainly um, uh, Trustee Musil had warned me of the time consumption that, that the chair position takes, and um, I, I can speak to the fact that uh, I certainly appreciate, Professor Cooper, you bringing it to our attention that y you feel somehow we violated, you know, the master agreement or, or statute. That's the first I'm hearing of it. Uh, I, I would concur with Trustee Musil that I, I don't believe we, we violated. I, I can understand if you disagree with something we've done, uh, but we'll certainly take that under advisement and research it better because it's possible we're wrong. Um, but thank you for bringing that to our attention. Uh, with that said, I, I certainly appreciate you. Uh, I've been a longtime ally of yours and, and your association. Uh, it's quite interesting to be in this position after um, years of not being the chair. So uh, I, I certainly do appreciate you and everything that you do, and uh, thank you for bringing that to our attention. Any other questions for Professor Cooper? Thank you, Brett. Thank you.
Uh, the next item on our agenda is the Johnson County Education Research Triangle. And uh, one of the fathers of that organization is Trustee Musil. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, continued to be very strong sales tax receipts. This is funded by a 1-8 cent sales tax approved by the voters of Johnson County in November of 2008. It funds uh, the, the KU Edwards campus, KU Cancer Center, and the K-State Olathe campus. Uh, receipts are up 15.1% uh, year to date over uh, 2021. Um, as we mentioned last time, part of that is in the inflation factor when sales taxes are a percentage of the actual price, but it is a it is a, a robust amount of revenue uh, flowing to JCERT. Our next meeting is October 31st. Um, once again, conflicting with our committee of the whole, but the, these, these are public meetings and the October 31st meeting will be held at the KU Cancer Center. Thank you. Thank you. I, I think you'll just have to remain the man, the myth and the legend, uh, Trustee Greg Musil. So we, we do miss you and sure hope you can make a personal appearance, but I understand and your grace for many years allowed me to work remotely, so I'm just teasing you, but. I'd rather be there. Any questions for Trustee Musil? Uh, seeing none, thank you, Greg. Uh, the next item on our agenda is the Kansas Association of Community College Trustees, of which our very own Trustee Ingram is president of. Not for long. The short. <laughs> Um, KACC, this is a rather long report for us, too, because we had a really robust meeting. Let's get to um, it. We met in Fort Scott on August 26th and 27th, and 18 of the 19 colleges were represented, which is really huge. Um, Barton County had a foundation fundraising event, which prevented their attendance, but we were really, really pleased with our attendance. The trustees discussed issues and challenges facing our colleges and brainstormed ways to, dif uh, to deal with difficult board decisions. It was the first time that we had met separate from the presidents in about three years. So it was really nice to just get the trustees together and to talk about issues that were prevalent to us. Uh, we also discussed the benefit of board trustee assessments, uh, meaning self-evaluations of board members, and the importance of establishing goals and measuring progress against those goals. Senator Jerry Moran's education policy advisor met with the group to discuss business in Washington, D.C. The recent student loan forgiveness was discussed, as well as the congressionally directed spending, which the senator helped get included in the appropriations bill. The bill is not likely to be finalized until December, but multiple community colleges will benefit if it makes it through the process in its current form. Mary DeWeese from Hush Blackwell discussed legal issues facing colleges and suggested ways boards of trustees could help ensure policies and procedures help protect the college from legal issues. Ken Traska, who was formerly uh, in Kansas as the president of, I believe it was Seward, uh, is now president of Lewis and Clark Community College and talked with the group about the importance of cybersecurity and the very trying situation they dealt with last year during a cyber incident. Kansas community colleges have requested additional funding to help prevent cybersecurity issues in the next budget cycle, which is what uh, uh, Dick Carter was referring to, a part of that, those dollars. State Senator Molly Bumgardner briefed the group on issues facing higher education in Kansas and stressed the importance of community colleges in that role. She discussed the various changes that will happen with legislative retirements and elections. Uh, she encouraged everyone to develop friendships with their new legislators and stressed the importance of being involved. KACCT presented her with the 2022 Kansas Community College Legislative Policy Champion Award for her work on the Kansas Promise Act. She also reminded the group of the upcoming work group related to the funding formula. Trustees and presidents participated in an activity which illustrated how difficult it is to find some information on college websites and how daunting that can be for first-generation students. Heather discussed the recent K-Board retreat, which included the changing demographics of the Kansas population and performance agreements changes. Mandating co-requisite remediation, math pathways, and a standard statewide score for college algebra and degree mapping and better academic advising are the areas of focus. If a college fails to meet a standard set by KBOR in any of these areas, they could lose up to 33% of their funding. Heather reminded everyone that they will need to have a legislative breakfast or lunch between Thanksgiving and December the 18th. She is uh, happy to come to each event and provide the keynote address related to this year's legislative priorities. I presided over the business meeting and reminded everyone if they are an active delegate wishing to run for an office 
to speak with either Heather or I prior to the next meeting, which will be in Coffeeville on December 2nd and 3rd. Uh, we will have our elections at that time and the agenda will be finalized at uh, the legislative agenda will be finalized at our December meeting. So with that, I conclude my report. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Thanks Trustee. Full any, meeting. any questions for Trustee Ingram? Dr. Brown, I don't know if you have anything you'd like to add. I think you provided a really good summary. It was a very good. Who, who won anyways. that award? Molly Bumgarner. S Senator Bumgarner. Senator Bumgarner. She works here, right? She does. Oh. She does. She does. Well, congratulations to Senator Bumgarner. Yes. Yes. We usually have some sort of legislative representative at our meetings, and I'm not sure that their local folks were able to attend, and so. Uh, Molly Baumgartner was invited and was you, you know, of course, that I know she's a strong ally. I do okay. know that. For the college. Yes. Uh, and for the system. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, any other questions for Trustee Ingram? Uh, seeing none, thank you, Trustee You're Ingram, welcome. Madam President. Uh, the next item on our agenda is the foundation report by Trustee Rattan. Thank you. Uh, more than 200 students participated in the scholarship luncheon this week on September 13th. It's the first year that this event was back since the pandemic. It was wonderful to hear all the impactful stories of how the scholarships have made a difference. Um, donors, trustees, foundation board members attended and celebrated the students and honored their dedication to furthering their education. I want to say five of the trustees were there, president was there, and we heard some really great stories from students. It, it was a really great event, and it was nice to see Joy Ginsburg in her first event as well. Um, the Harvest Dinner was sold out and another great success. The funds raised help support sustainability scholarships. Upcoming events are Lace Up for Learning 5K Run. Walk is on Sunday, October 9th. The proceeds will benefit student scholarships. If you look on the foundation website, you'll get more details. The Some Enchanted Evening Gala will return on November 12th. Sponsorships and seats are available at jccc.edu slash forward slash SEE. -E. Buy your tickets. Uh, the foundation is collaborating with marketing to refresh the web pages that are inside of the college website. The final version is going to be more streamlined and allow donors to quickly navigate to where they want to go. The pages will also be more action oriented with the goal of making it easier to obtain online gifts. That is all that I have. Thank you, Trustee Rattan. Any questions for Trustee Rattan? Uh, seeing none. Thank you, Trustee Rattan. Uh, the next item on our agenda is the hearing for the revenue neutral rate, uh, which can be found at uh, board one of not the packet, but the committee of the whole report, correct? Yes. Uh, I'd like it's to. It's in the board packet. It's, it's in the board on page packet. one. It's on page one. Excuse me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to open the hearing for any comment, and I don't believe we have anybody registered for that. I do not. Uh, so seeing that. We have no one to comment from the public. I will then close the hearing for the revenue neutral rate and um, then open mm -hmm. the 2022-23 budget public hearing uh, for comment. And I have been told in brief that we do not have anyone for comment for the 2022-2023 budget public hearing, uh, which I will then close and then move on is that correct? To the committee reports and recommendations. So the next item on our agenda is the committee of the whole report brought to us by the president of the Kansas Association of Community College Trustees, Trustee Ingram. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. The committee of the whole meeting was held by Zoom webinar on Monday, August 29th, 2022. Trustees Nancy Ingram, Laura Smith Everett, Mark Hamill, Joy Coston, and Don Rattan and Dr. Bound attended the meeting. Lee Cross joined and Greg Usel was absent. Pete Bell, uh, excuse me, the minutes are found on pages two through nine in the board packet. I meant to include that in my opening statement. Thank you. Pete Belk, Director of Admission and Recruitment, presented on the college's new student recruitment efforts. Today's students rely on more than the high school counselor and college recruiter when making college going decisions. The recruitment team still visits each county school several times attends college fairs and hosts special events and groups on campus. In addition to in-person recruitment, JCCC has paid, uh, has active paid search, pay-per-click, and programmatic digital display ad campaigns. 
These efforts contribute to the fact that JCCC is still the number one choice of the county's first time freshmen who remain in Kansas. We enroll an impressive 49% of the county's first time freshmen. Rachel Lears, Associate Vice President, Financial Services, CFO, stated that pursuant to KSA 79-2988, the college is subject to certain notice and public hearing requirements prior to approval by the Board of Trustees to exceed the revenue neutral rate for property tax purposes. The college has notified the Johnson County Clerk of intent to exceed the revenue neutral rate for the 2022-23 fiscal year and has published notice of the required public hearing to be held on September 15, 2022 at 5 p.m. At the conclusion of the rate hearing, the college administration recommends that the Board of Trustees adopt the attached resolution to levy a property tax ex rate exceeding the revenue neutral rate for the 2022-23 fiscal year. So at this time, Rachel, if you would like to come forward and provide your presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Trustee Ingram. Uh, I do just have a couple of slides uh, to help inform our budget conversation. We good there? There we go. All right, and these are, again, are, are the same slides that um, were shared at the Committee of the Whole meeting and have been available on the college website um, and in the Committee of the Whole packet. Um, the first thing I wanted to talk about just briefly was a reminder about our budget development process and just, um, again, to demonstrate our budget calendar. We do work on the budget throughout the entire year. It is, is a 12-month uh, process. We believe it is a very transparent and participative process. We have over 100 campus stakeholders involved in the um, budget process every year, including our students. In fact, we met with the Student Senate leadership team in the fall semester and in the spring semester last academic year um, to seek out their input. Um, of course, the budget, um, the management budget or the working budget for our fiscal year that began on July 1st of 2022 was approved by the board in May. Um, and tonight's um, hearing and uh, vote is the last official step in the adoption, the legal adoption process for our 22-23 um, budget. The reason that we are doing it at this point in time is to be compliant with the statute that requires that our revenue neutral rate hearing is conducted between August the 20th and September the 20th. So since it has been since May, about four months since we worked to um, adopt the management budget again or the working budget, I thought it would be helpful to go through some of the key assumptions or the key factors in our budget for next year. Uh, this slide relates to the general fund of the college, which again is our primary operating fund, and just wanted to touch briefly on some of the, um, the main revenue and expense um, assumptions. So first up in the revenue section, um, as it relates to the property tax revenue that the college receives, which is our primary source of revenue, um, we do anticipate net growth in property values of over 9% that will generate incremental tax revenue to the college. Um, that amount is about $4 million that we expected additional year over year in our general fund. However, um, our proposed property tax levy rate of 8.6 mills, um, it, it does exceed the revenue neutral rate and we just um, conducted our, our hearing for that um, to exceed that rate and comply with the statutory process. Um, but did want to point out again that our proposed tax levy rate of 8.6 mills is a half mill lower than the current rate. We'll be uh, reducing our, our tax levy rate from 9.1 mills um, down to 8.6. This is the fourth rate reduction in the past five years that the college has approved. And we expect that it will save Johnson County taxpayers approximately $6 million in the coming year. Um, related to our uh, revenue from student tuition and fees in the general fund, uh, the board did approve last December our first tuition rate increase in three years. Um, that increased cost per credit hour by $3 for Johnson County resident students, bringing their tuition cost to $97 per credit hour. Um, and again, those rates were effective with the fall uh, 22 semester, the semester that we're currently in. Uh, and then we did, um, as we discussed, establish a new College Now grant program in our general fund um, with a funding appropriation of $200,000 to help support access and affordability for our Johnson County resident high school students. So to offset some of the impact of that tuition rate increase. 
Um, so those are some of the key factors in our general fund revenues. Um, related to expenses, uh, one of the most significant line items in our budget annually is compensation and benefits for our employees. And so this budget does provide for, on average, a 2.5% compensation increase for our faculty and staff. Um, we are also making additional investments in employees by establishing a $15 minimum wage here at the college and funding a new career laddering program. Uh, we're not expecting to make any change in the total number of budgeted faculty and staff positions. Uh, within our operating budget category, uh, we have provided over $800,000 to support the strategic plan initiatives. Uh, we have provided for uh, known inflationary increases, and some of the examples that I've commonly used when talking about this are um, inflationary increases that we've seen in things like software licenses, uh, our insurance premiums, supplies, things of that nature. And then finally, we will be completing our um, renovation of the science labs and classrooms in the CLB and science buildings. That has been funded again over the past, over three fiscal years, so the two preceding years and this year. From our reserves in the general fund, uh, total project budget was $44 million, and uh, we expect that project to be completed in time for the start of the fall semester in August of 2023. Um, again, related to the general fund revenue, we do have a budget, a total budget of $169 million for next year. Uh, just wanted to illustrate, again, the primary sources of our revenue. So 68% of that budget total will come from property taxes. Um, about 16% from student tuition and fees, 14% um, funding through the state of Kansas, our annual operating grant, um, and then about 2% of our general fund budget is uh, from investment income and uh, other sources. For our expenses in the general fund, again, next year our budget is $183 million. 53% uh, of that is salaries and 18% employee benefits. About 17% of the total budget is for our current operating, 10% is capital, that includes the $14 million appropriation for the science labs, and then we have about $3.6 million or 2% of our budget directed towards um, debt service. So the last slide that I have for you um, is just again a summary of our general fund budget um, for next year, again $169 million of revenue and $183 million in expenses. So we are adopting a deficit budget of about $14.4 million. Um, again, we would have we would be bringing forward a balanced budget um, to you to adopt, but for the $14 million uh, one-time allocation and therefore the science labs. Um, that will be a contribution from reserves as, as planned. So I will uh, stop there and take any final questions that you have. Um, and thank you again for your support of the budget process to date. And we're, we're almost done. Uh, Vice President Lears, thank you, and thank you for all your work. Any questions for Rachel? Is now the time for that? Or, mm -hmm. Okay. Everybody looked at me like I was wrong. I don't okay. think we have any questions. Thank That's you. That's great. And we can thank you for your presentation. presentation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so I will go ahead and read the recommendation. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Very good. Uh, Mr. Chair, it is the recommendation of the Committee of the Whole that the Board of Trustees accept the recommendation of the College Administration to adopt a resolution to levy a property tax rate exceeding the revenue neutral rate for the 2022-23 fiscal year as found on the following pages. And I will make that motion. The motion has been moved. Is there a second? A second. second. The birthday woman, Trustee Laura Smith Everett, seconds it. The motion has been moved and seconded. Uh, although, any discussion? Any discussion? I'm in such a hurry to get out of here. Let's just vote. Trustee Hamill. And Thank you. <clears throat> I'll make it really brief. We really had most of the discussion in May, so there's no point in rehashing a whole lot of it. I just would like to say I'd like to go revenue neutral this time, but that's all I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you for your comment. Thank you. Any other questions or comment? Uh, seeing none. We, we will vote and then I will read the resolution. Is that correct? Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Uh, That's the order of it. I just yeah. wanted to make sure yeah. that you're confirming it for me. Thank you very much. And I apologize. No, no, you're fine. I, yeah. I was jumping the gun. So I think. Well, we need to vote. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you wanted to read it. So. No, I'll read it. Uh, uh, the motion has been moved and seconded. Discussion has ended. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you, Trustee Musil. Those opposed, no. No. 
Uh, the motion passes, six to one. Trustee. Yes. Resolution of the Board of Trustees of Johnson County Community College, Johnson County, Kansas, to levy a property tax rate increase exceeding the revenue neutral rate. Whereas the revenue neutral rate for Johnson County Community College is calculated at 8.264 mills by the Johnson County Clerk and whereas the budget proposed by the Board of Trustees of Johnson County Community College will require the levy of a property tax rate exceeding the revenue neutral rate and whereas the Board of Trustees held a hearing on September 15th, 2022, allowing all interested taxpayers desiring to be heard an opportunity to give oral testimony and whereas the Board of Trustees of Johnson County Community College, having heard testimony, still finds it necessary to exceed the revenue neutral rate. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Trustees of Johnson County Community College, Johnson County Community College shall levy a property tax rate exceeding the revenue neutral rate of 8.264 mills. This resolution shall take effect and be enforced immediately upon its adoption and shall remain in effect until future action is taken by the Board of Trustees. Adopted by the Board of Trustees of Johnson County Community College, Johnson County, Kansas, this 15th day of September 22. Thank you. Okay, we'll go ahead. Your next item, yeah. Uh, yes, uh, this is fiscal year 2022 legal budget adoption. Ms. Lear said that the Board of Trustees adopted the fiscal year 2022-23 management budget on May 12, 2022. No changes are are proposed for the final fiscal year 2022-23 legal budget. Key features of the proposed 2022-23 budget are as follows. The mill levy rate will be reduced by one half mill from 9.1 to 8.6 mills per thousand, representing the fourth mill levy rate reduction in the past five years. Tuition rates per credit hour will increase for the first time in three years. $3 for Johnson County residents to $97, $4 for other Kansas residents, $116, and $5 for out-of-state and international students, and $228, and metro rate, $143 for students. The budget provides for an average 2.5 salary increase for faculty and staff members with no change to the total number of budgeted positions. The general fund capital budget includes $14 million toward completion of the multi-year science lab renovation project. We do have a recommendation. It is the recommendation of the Committee of the Whole that the Board of Trustees accept the recommendation of the College Administration to adopt the fiscal year 2022-23 legal budget as presented and does hereby certify said budget to the County Clerk of Johnson County, Kansas for collection in the manner prescribed by law. And I will make that motion. Second. Second. The motion has been moved and seconded by Trustee Joy Coaston. Uh, any discussion? Any discussion? Trustee Musel. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I think there are times when um, we need to have some discussion, just explanation beyond what Rachel just did a great job of um, and always does and what uh, Trustee Ingram reported. Uh, the budget process will start again this month. It starts in September for the 2023-2024 fiscal year, just like it started last September a year ago for this to reach the budget process we're in right now. We hear a lot of angst by taxpayers, um, some that are concerned that we are not transparent in our process. I think it's very important that we continually remind people that this is an 11 or 12 month process. The board process starts in December when we adopt budget guidelines that our budget officers throughout the campus uh, are required to follow. And that includes whether we are going to increase, decrease or hold the mill levy, whether we are going to increase or decrease or hold steady tuition, um, whether there are initiatives that we want included. And those things are done in a very public session, both at the committee of the whole last year and then at the December meeting. We continue that process. And this year had a public uh, board retreat, I believe in March, when Rachel and the administration first presented budget alternatives and budget proposals. In April, we had a, an hour plus 
public Zoom and in-person meeting available for a budget workshop. We followed that up in May um, with a discussion and a decision on the management budget. We followed that up in June and July with discussions about the publication of our official budget. And now here in September, uh, we are acting on that budget. Those materials are available to anybody that has access to the internet and they can be obtained in hard copy by anybody that contacts uh, this college. So I think it's important that we all continue to help educate the public that this is a public, transparent, open process. And although each of us may individually on this board or as a taxpayer citizen of Johnson County disagree with certain decisions, those decisions are not conducted in the dark or in the shadows. They're conducted publicly. I will take the fact that we had no public comment this, this, this evening, either in the open comment period or on the budget, the two budget hearings, as some indication that folks understand what the budget is. And if they don't agree with it, they nonetheless understand how we got to this point. Um, and if I'm looking at the all funds budget correctly, we are increasing it by about 1.6%, although our general fund budget is increased more than that. We are lowering the mill levy for the fourth time in five years. Yes, individual taxpayers will be paying more dollars because of their increase in value, but for the fourth time in five years, we have lowered the mill levy and we've lowered it 62% towards the revenue neutral rate that I know Trustee Hamill um, uh, wishes we could have gotten to and I think we need to think about for next year. Um, I do want to mention within the strategic initiatives that the $800,000 is in the budget is that there's an amount in there uh, for consideration of the Office of Inclusion and Belonging, what is, what is often referred to as DEI, in which was there were accusations levied back in earlier this year that it was being <coughs> snuck in the budget, it was being hidden in the budget, which is interesting since everybody seemed to know about it. But that is part of the strategic initiatives that are funded in this budget. I am one that am somewhat skeptical that an office is the best way to go um, to meet the needs of our students. And by that, I mean all students to get to st student success. Um, I made a statement on that back in May and I'll stand by that statement. Uh, but it is in the budget and I'm trusting this administration and then this board going forward to make sure we make that work as we all intended to do to strengthen this college and our ability to recruit, attract, retain, teach students, faculty, and staff. Um, so with that, Mr. Chair, I appreciate the time. I just feel compelled every year to remind everybody about the openness and the length of this process and congratulate our staff uh, for the great job they do in educating not only this board, but the public. And with that, I will certainly support the budget as presented. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Trustee. Uh, Trustee Ham. Yeah, for clarification, the issues that I heard with the transparency was the fact that we don't know what we're getting with that office. We don't have who's gonna be hired, we don't have any, exactly how many people it's gonna be, who they're reporting to, um, how this money's being spent. That's where the transparency comes into play. Um, there's no definitions on what they're gonna be doing with the office exactly. So that was the issue that I had heard throughout the community. Uh, I, I thank you for the comment. Um, are there any other comments? I, I have some, but I wanna... Well, I if, if I could, I, I agree with Mark, that was a lot of the concern and that was my concern. Um, and the, the reality is we have to authorize certain things in the budget. We don't spend our, we don't have to spend all our budget. And so um, I, I share that concern about definition. I think we have more of it now and I think we'll get more of it from, from the administration as we go forward. But I appreciate Mark bringing that up because that, that was one thing that I think concerned concerned me and concerned others about it. Um, and if that was the only transparency concern, then then uh, um, I will recognize that as a valid one. Thank you, Mark. 
Uh, I'll take the Trustee smith -Hibber. I don't want to spend much time on this um, because at this point it is in the past. However, I, I want to echo um, um, Trustee's comments that I, I support. And I, I bonus points to the fact that you have it memorized um, the budget process. So, you know, 10 extra bonus points, Trustee <laughs> Musil, because you, you could go through those dates. But it is true that every single month, um, I think that was one of the first things as a trustee to learn, that every single month we are dealing with the budget, and every single month in one way or another, we get presentations that are active to the public, and we get, um, we get packets of information that are available to the public. Um, and that we are as transparent as possible. As for the um, Office of Belonging, I, I think we talk all the time about getting into the weeds and where the line is for trustees. And, and our job is to trust that the um, executive branch of the college is doing what they're supposed to and that they that we agreed that when we voted for strategic plan, which some of you weren't here when, when that was voted on, but the former board voted for and approved that strategic plan and we've continued to support those principles along the way. And that one of those is we have success rates that are different for different students depending on their background, depending on where they come from or what they are dealing with, and that we need to find solutions to those. Um, and it's not my job to determine if I'm going to approve of something if after I know who's going to be hired. Um, it's my job to say that we uh, believe and trust that that is a priority and that your office can do um, the part of, execu of um, executing that. And I just want to um, echo that support again because I think it's important to know where that line is. And, and I get the com you know, the, that was the public's comments and that's their perspective, but it's also our job as trustees to be liaisons and to communicate that and to not communicate that there are um, sneaky or alternative um, things happening on this campus and that people are doing their due diligence to communicate this. I also am in, I think it was my third year, did we say that <laughs> the other day, Ms. Trustee Inger? We were so. trying to determine how long, I think it's only been three years, but you know, I spent the year before running, and it, this was an issue four years ago um, from the community that they wanted an office um, to help all students succeed, which we still continue to have a problem with, and we have a lapse um, for some groups of people, and we've got to find solutions for that, which is what this office is supposed to do. So that concludes my comments, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Madam Trustee. Trustee Inger. I, I would also say, in addition to that, I'm going to kind of, you know, follow you and say, yes, and piggyback, um, that we have a number of school districts that have offices of DEI. They may not call it DEI. They may call it something else. But I think for me, um, as much as anything, one of, one of the visions in the Olathe School District is preparing students for their future. That's not my future. And, you know, we have students who are accustomed to some of these supports that didn't exist when we were in school but they've been a part of them, they expect them, and, and why would we not offer some of these same kinds of things and support to some of our students? So that said, I support the budget. Um, my concern was that we've got a new student success person coming in who will be responsible for this person and their charge, but again, that is your responsibility to carry that out, and I'm sure we'll have continued <coughs> questions in the future. Right. The other thing that I would like to say um, is that a, a friend of mine who is on one of the school boards locally um, posted a while back, and I just want to read it. She said, uh, she was talking about their finance person, and she said, I'd put him up against anyone in a school finance Jeopardy game. He never makes you feel small asking questions about revenue neutral rates and other things, capital improvements, bond dollars, et cetera. And that's the way I feel about Rachel Lears, too is that any time I have gone to her and asked a question, no matter how small, no matter how silly, please help me with my memory, um, you know, please thank your staff. This is, as Greg mentioned, um, Trustee Musil, we, we had talked earlier about the fact that we want to continue to talk and share with our newer trustees. You know, this is an ongoing process, and it really, Greg said it starts in September. It starts tomorrow. You know, it never ended, quite frankly, and it just keeps on going. So I think that's a good thing to remember. But Rachel, your staff, please thank them. Um, I reached out to you today with a question just as a reminder, and, and she responded back. I just asked, you know, the average homeowner will pay um, an increase of $16, or that's 4% over last year. 
but it is $16 per household. And I just wanted to hold on to those numbers too, because as you mentioned, educating our public is really part of our job as trustees and liaison and to remind people, yes, we don't like it any more than anybody else when you have to raise a tax dollar, but I think this is a good investment. So thank you. Thank you, Madam Trustee. Any other comments? I, I have a few. Um, I think for starters, the strength of the Johnson County economy is not an accident. We have this college, among other institutions and supporters of it, that help, help fuel it. But the things that we do here help strengthen that economy. Uh, with respect to four mill cuts in five years, I haven't voted for all of them, so I'm not about to take credit for all of them, but I've been here. And I believe we've cut the mill five or six times over the last seven or eight years, uh, to my knowledge. And Vice President Lears is shaking her head. So we have repeatedly and consistently cut the mill. And um, I believe we have strong uh, support uh, for that. Uh, I appreciate all of the trustee comments uh, greatly. And I will say that uh, more than one observer from the faculty and in the, the college communities has said that they, they will tune in to, to watch Trustee Musil and I debate. So the idea that there's uh, um, anything in the dark or snuck into a budget process is thoroughly entertaining. It's not exactly Lincoln Douglas, but uh, Greg Musil's not easy to argue with. So, Can I be Lincoln? <laughs> <laughs> I said you first. I said you first. Um, you know, with respect to the criticism that there's money appropriated and we don't know what we're going to do with it, I, I think that's valid. I, I think that's just. I think it's a fair point. Uh, I, I will say in response that uh, it does nevertheless remind me of the time of the Civil War or the New Deal where we had administrative issues and problems and the need for a hierarchy and a structure, a bureaucratic structure to be built so that m m monies and administration could be executed. So I think we've identified a need uh, with respect to uh, the Office of Inclusion and Belonging and uh, we can see uh, both in the private and public sector, a need and a trend of this happening. And, uh, you know, as David Gergen is the first one I ever remember saying it, that the trust is the coin of the realm. And, and Trustee Ingram, she would tell me every day if I let her call me every day, but she, she says it often, that trust is the coin of the realm. And I think we need to trust our, our administration to look at these public and private uh, examples of how to execute this model. I, I think the concerns are valid. I know we've had many private citizens bring us concerns and, uh, you, you know, we're not going to stop watching what Dr. Bound and his administration is doing. I, I can promise you that. And as much as I like Andy <coughs> Bound, uh, I, I can assure you he, he ghosts me when I call him from time to time because he's tired of hearing me. But uh, I think we've had a great deal of time for comment and suggestions. So um, the people of Johnson County put us here. We've had several months to bring forth any kind of uh, comments, suggestions, or, or recommendations that we might have with respect to an office or how to execute this. So I, I'm in a position where I, I'm certainly going to support this budget. I have, uh, I believe, in the past, uh, despite being against the lowering of the mill. And I, I trust this board is operating in good faith and, and all of our, our administration staff are doing so. So I, I thank the trustees for their comments and their support. And unless there's any other comments, I, I believe we're at a point to vote on this. All right, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, aye. Thank you, trust me. Uh, those opposed? No. And the motion passes, six to one. Trustee Ng. Yes. Uh, moving on to business services, uh, Janelle Vogler, Associate Vice President of Business Services, reviewed three bid for RFP recommendations. The first is the annual contact for prime vendor for food and food supplies. Mr. Chair, I would note uh, that under the description of services, it said the agreement is being extended for one additional year due to continued labor shortages and supply chain issues in the food supply industry. It is the recommendation of the Committee of the Whole that the Board of Trustees accept the recommendation of the College Administration to approve a one-year contract extension to Cisco Food Services of Kansas City for the annual prime vendor food and food supplies for the estimated amount of $300,000 through October 23rd, 2023. And I so move. I second because it's food. <laughs> the motion has been moved by Trustee Ingram and seconded by Trustee Laura Smith Everett. Any discussion? Any discussion? 
Uh, seeing none, uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Trustee. Thank you. Uh, next is the annual contract for housekeeping services. Once again, Mr. Chair, I will note that this agreement is being extended for one additional year. The last six years of the agreement was evaluated within the results. Time will be dedicated to determine the optimum balance between facilities that are maintained by JCCC and those that are serviced by a third party provider. And that recommendation is the recommendation of the Committee of the Whole that the Board of Trustees accept the recommendation of the College Administration to approve an additional one-year contract extension to ABM on-site services for annual housekeeping services for the estimated amount of six hundred, excuse me, seven hundred sixty-two thousand dollars through September thirtieth, twenty twenty-three, and I so move. The motion has been made and seconded by Trustee Musel. Second. <laughs> <laughs> like, really? Any discussion? <laughs> I was. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, I was just curious kind of when we're going to hear some information on kind of where we're at with making that determination. I know Mike's been working really hard on that, but I was just kind of curious when we might get a little more update on that. Probably the, uh, December, January. Okay. We'll be back. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed. <laughs> the motion passes unanimously. And the final bid uh, is for the annual contract for chiller maintenance services. And that would be the low bid as listed in your board report. It is the recommendation of the Committee of the Whole that the Board of Trustees accept the recommendation of the College Administration to approve the low bid from Fagan Company for an annual contract for chiller maintenance services, excuse me, for a base year amount of $37,497 and a total estimated expenditure of $165,147.45, including the renewal options through 2027. And I so move. Second. The motion has been made by Trustee Ingram and seconded by Trustee Musel. Uh, any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed? Motion passes unanimously. And finally, uh, in our final order of business, Dr. Baum reviewed his goals for 2022-2023. Adoption of those goals will be addressed during the old business at the September 15th, 2022 board meeting. No questions were raised regarding the informational items provided in the committee of the whole packet. And that, Mr. Chair, concludes my report. I would just like to comment um, I thank the trustees for their input and Dr. Bounds' work on his goals. I had encouraged him to draft his own goals, largely because I had no idea um, how to set goals other than my nine years of experience. And uh, I wanted him to set his own goals so that it would be uh, utterly fair uh, that the measuring stick uh, that we guide him, judge him by, is, it was picked by him. I think he's a sound professional and I'm happy for uh, the higher uh, I think Dr. Andrew Bound would dispel any notion that I'm soft on Andy Bound. Um, that's both a humor point and a serious one. And so I'm happy uh, for those goals. I know we'll get to them in old business, but I just want to take that opportunity to comment. And you're done. Is that correct? I am. Thank you, Madam Trustee. You're uh, the next item on our agenda is President's recommendations for actions. And the first item is the Treasurer's report. Trustee Smith Everett. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Treasurer's report is found on pages 12 through 23 of your packet. Um, the board packet includes the month ended July 31st, 2022. Some items of note include on page one, the general post-secondary technical education funds, which are the primary operating funds of the college. The state operating grant payment for the fall semester of 12 million was received on August 2nd and will be included in next month's report. The general fund unencumbered cash was 99 million as of July 31st, 2022, and expenditures in the primary operating funds are within approved budgetary limits. I can also just take a minute to say, I didn't want to jump on Trustee Ingram's lovely comments, but I also agree about Ms. Leaders who just happened to step out so she can't hear it, but how important she is, how much she 
um, does to make us look good and prepared, such as these reports that are provided each month, um, and how much we appreciate it. So if you, Mike will please pass that on to her. Um, it is a recommendation of the College Administration that the Board of Trustees approve the Treasurer's report for the month ended July 31st, 2022, subject to audit. And I will make that motion. I'll second. The motion has been moved by Treasurer, Trustee Treasurer Laura Smith Everett and seconded by the President of the Kansas Association of Community College Trustees, Nancy Ingram. Any discussion? Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. I just think it's important to note, I always look at what's on page 22 of our packet this month, which is the chart showing our reserves effectively. And uh, because of the fact that we have uh, reduced the mill levy, our reserves will be lower than they've been the last two years as indicated by the dashed green line. Um, and so when we, we, I think we're all cognizant of the fact that when you have revenues and expenses, when you change one or the other of those, you have an effect on your reserves and the ability of the college to meet uh, current and future needs. So I'm, I just wanted to point that out today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Trustee. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 And those opposed? Yes. The uh, motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Trustee Smith Everett. Uh, the next item on our report is the monthly report to the board by President Dr. Andrew Bannon. Thank you, Chair Cross. Um, I, this evening, um, I'd like to start my report by welcoming a new staff member to the college. Um, and I'd like to introduce uh, everyone uh, to Heather Calloway, who joins us as our Director of Internal Audit and Advisory Services. And uh, we're thrilled to have her with us, and she's jumped right in, uh, connecting with folks across campus um, and preparing to really take on the, the work that she has ahead of her. Um, one of the things that I was instantly impressed with, with her during the interview process was the importance she places on, uh, on relationships. And, and the high standards that she holds herself and others to, which allows her to, to perform uh, internal audit functions incredibly well. And we saw a demonstration of that during the interview process. And so, Heather, we're very happy to have you here as part of our team. All right, we're gonna jump in with, with the report. So there isn't a clicker up here for me, so I'll let you all, either you can run me, throw me one, hand me one. Well, if you're gonna throw it, throw it to Mark, he's got the hands over there, so. Although you just you just throw the ball, you don't. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you, know. you don't have I don't, to receive, yeah. I don't know if it's up here, so I'll just run it for you. All right, <laughs> or I can walk over there and run it if you want. That's you're up to you, sir. You're good, all right. Bye. So um, in uh, conversation tonight, um, we started with a discussion with uh, Chris Arraso. And uh, again, as I always say, it's a highlight for me of the time I get to spend with our students. And the student spotlight each and every month is certainly at the, high, at the top of that list. Um, we'll, we'll talk through a variety of things here in just a moment. So if we want to jump through a couple slides, um, go two more. And right there. So as we think about how we celebrate uh, both our students and the community, uh, this uh, today uh, begins the month-long celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month. Um, and we have a variety of activities that are taking place with our students. I'm gonna focus in on, on activities with our students. Um, and so um, on the uh, 19th of the month um, is the first activity. Uh, that'll be next Monday, uh, exhibition, uh, the Maya exhibition, exhibition at Union Station will engage a group of about 30 students. Um, a a um, frequent activity, um, actually on the 26th, let me, 24th, so a week from Saturday, we are hosting the Latino Arts Festival. Uh, will be a time when we bring thousands of folks onto campus who may not ever come to campus before. Um, we'll get a chance not only to see our campus and engage with uh, faculty and staff from across campus, but they'll also get to meet Chris and buy some of his amazing uh, art. Um, so we're happy to be hosting that. Um, on the 26th, 
um, with our uh, student group, um, he, which he also re re referenced in his comments, uh, Luna, or Latinos United Now and Always, um, in a trivia event um, that actually is an ongoing event that I think they offer um, just about every year. Um, and then um, in uh, mid-October, just before the end of the month, um, the Lunar Kermes um, is another Hispanic uh, cultural event, um, which will celebrate many of the accomplishments of our community and feature um, local Latinx restaurants, businesses, and organizations, and artists. So in a way to bring folks to campus, yes. Can I ask um, for the Latino Arts Festival, where will it be held? It'll be held here outside on campus. So okay. between Fads and Rainier. There we go. Great. Yeah. It'll be right outside of our retreat. Um, so <laughs> Great. Go um, to it right after. Yeah. Anyway, so yes, we'll be able to move right from the retreat into that. Um, uh, and then uh, our staff development team and faculty development team, I know, are, are also developing other activities um, for faculty and staff across campus throughout the month. Also, this month, the month of September, is Deaf Awareness Month. Um, and so our student life uh, group is partnering with Access Services um, and, and are doing a meet and greet um, with the artist uh, Definitely Dope, Matt Maxey. Um, he's a hip hop ASL interpreter, American Sign Language interpreter, who brings all this together through music. So it should be a good, good opportunity for us. So, all right, next slide, please. Let's start to talk enrollment. Um, I am cautiously, and I've been reminded to be cautiously optimistic about these numbers, but if you recall back to the last time we were together as a board, that number was minus 4.2. Mm -hmm. Okay, today the number is negative uh, 1 uh, percent. Um, that is a huge gain that I contribute, that I attribute to our, our staff across campus, uh, you name it, whether we're talking about uh, counseling, we're talking about the Bursar's office, we're talking about um, uh, financial aid, um, our finance team, and, and all the work that went into helping um, students get on a payment plan or pay their bill um, meant that we dropped fewer students for non-payment than we have in the past. Um, in addition to that, we've seen um, a, a noticeable increase, and if you look at the bottom right-hand corner of the, of the chart, there's a, a, an insert there that we don't normally show on this, um, but it gives you a, a, an indication. The blue line um, is the Quick Step Plus. That is college algebra taught at the high schools. Remember, we made two uh, noticeable changes this year. We put in place multiple measures of placement, so uh, not required to take a placement exam um, for placement in, so that makes it accessible to more students. In addition, if you think back to the management budget that we put in place and began operating under and now officially approved as a budget, um, the $200,000 that went to uh, support Johnson County students um, taking the classes at their high school through College Now courses um, we, we see evidence that those two factors are, are allowing us to see more enrollment in Quick Step Plus. And the belief is it's not just a, a quickening of the enrollment, but it is, it is certainly that, but it is also an increase in the enrollment that we're seeing um, at the high schools. Am I saying that correct, John? Close enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But you have to be determined if it's a change in the trend or it is actually an increase. Okay, all right, then let me soften that up a little bit. Yep. We are seeing fewer students dropping from classes, both in terms of those that would drop during the first week that allows for 100% refund, um, and those who would drop after the first week um, and leading up to census, which is next Monday at the close of business, both of those groups saw double digit declines in drop rates. Um, that is significant, and that, again, that goes back to the work of our faculty and our staff across the college um, to um, really engage students um, so that they're less likely to uh, drop out. Um, a few other uh, noteworthy um, <coughs> items related to enrollment. 
Our Hispanic uh, headcount is up significantly, almost 11%. Um, our developmental math um, course enrollments is up 17%. Full-time students are up slightly at just over 2% as our uh, transfer students. Where we're down, and we've talked about this previously, are the non-traditional age students, um, so um, older students, and um, our out-of-state and metro students are down both about 9%. So that's where we are from an enrollment standpoint on the credit side. That's good news. That's good news. All right, next slide. Um, now we look at, at um, our continuing ed enrollment. And again, um, we're seeing uh, a good pace there. Um, we're seeing an increase um, over last year. Uh, last year at this time, we had about 2,055 students enrolled. This year, we're at about a little over 2,200 students enrolled. Um, and so we're continuing to see a growth. While it is not the rate of growth that we saw last year, it is certainly an increase uh, in enrollment. And we're very pleased to see that. Can, so, um, yes. Can I ask a question about that? That just occurred to me. We may have addressed this previously, but when we see an uptick in credit, do we typically see uh, slowing down and continue? Is there a correlation at all between those two, or not, is it? Are they generally just very separate enrollments that are not? Okay. They're typically separate. Okay. It's more economic factors. Uh huh. That's that's kind of what I was thinking. Is if you had the ability to enroll in credit, maybe then you wouldn't need some of the continuing ed that might be the cheaper, faster options for you. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay, and then I wanted to provide uh, an update if we go to the next slide um, on key items that we've been discussing uh, that are being led by the human resources team. Um, <coughs> the first is uh, related to the sunsetting of the verb. Um, uh, to date, we have uh, six faculty and 12 staff members who have uh, selected to utilize uh, the VERB, um, either retiring at the end of this uh, fiscal year or somewhere between that and, well, between now and the end of the fiscal year um, are where the retirements are, in, are occurring. I think those numbers um, are not surprising to us from the standpoint of uh, we know particularly from a faculty standpoint, faculty are most likely to retire um, at the end of the, after the, the academic year. Um, so um, we are also bringing in uh, both from our partners at, at Two West, um, as well as uh, the folks at, at CAPERS and TIAA um, to come in and do sessions, both with those considering uh, weighing out whether or not do I take this or not, um, as well as the retirement planning that needs to happen related to all that. So helping um, our uh, employees feel that they have the resources available to them to help them make the most well-informed decisions that they can about their um, retirement timeline. And then finally, under the, the verb category, the verb sunset, um, the committee has continued to work. Um, with, with the expectation that they will have a recommendation next month come to cabinet and uh, from there uh, if there's there will be a recommendation to come forward um, which could be a wide variety of options um, would come forward to you in a board meeting in November would be the plan okay. I, I mr. chair may I ask a Madam trustee. thank you um, in my little brain, as I'm looking at all of this, I know the end of December is that cutoff date for us. Um, we heard the number 124. Mm -hmm. Are we still thinking that's kind of the number that we would be anticipating? I know we have no way of knowing. Right, right. We so, really have, go ahead. We really go ahead. have no way of knowing. It, it really just depends on, on individuals evaluation of their own individual situation that number comes from the people that we thought would be likely to take it based on their years of service and the amount of their sick leave balances so just kind of a general projection of what it might look like i i just um am getting a little answer about that by the minute just to you know 
protect what we have here and uh, certainly you know the whole education piece is just really tough right now and I know K-12 is struggling and they're struggling across the state that you know I don't even know what kind of a plan you could have in place right. but I think we need to continue to keep this in front of us. Yes. I agree. My memory is that that was that number was the eligible number. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's higher for the eligible, I think, isn't it? Go ahead. The eligibility is, is higher. Let me come up here. Yes, sure. And this is Colleen Chandler, who's our interim vice president for human resources. Hi, Colleen. Individuals that are eligible, um, but again, we were looking at the figures of those individuals who are eligible, along with um, sick leave balances that would be likely to take advantage of it. An individual with a very low sick leave balance really wouldn't reap the benefits of an individual that had a, a significant. So, so there was always a likelihood factor mm -hmm. considered. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Thank you. Is there any other questions for Colleen? <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. So then the, the, the next item is an update on the compensation table. And again, just as a reminder, the compensable, compensation table is um, it's a, a pay structure that we use uh, that, on which we base current and future compensation uh, for both our hourly and salaried staff. And it's built, frankly, it's built off of much of the framework of the former compensation table, uh, but with some updates. And, and again, as I've reported before, um, that uh, staff have been transitioned to the new table. That happened uh, right away over the summer. Um, and that our human resources team continues, uh, is currently making equity adjustments as they arise um, as we move forward. The last category on, on, on this slide is really around the career laddering work. And as a reminder, career ladder is a series of defined levels within a job family um, where the, the nature of the work is similar, where various levels represent the requirements you know, with increased skill, with increased knowledge and responsibility as an employee moves throughout the career. So that's the, the framework that we've been, that we've been talking about. Um, the RFP for that work is out to bid and is due back uh, next week. Um, a group of folks from across staff and human resources um, have been uh, have, has being formed, um, and they will um, review those bids that come in um, and develop a recommendation uh, there um, that would eventually come to the board. We'd anticipate they'd make a decision in October. It would come to you. Um, in November uh, for implementation there. Um, it, it, to wrap up this slide, I want to reiterate um, the importance of our faculty and staff and our ability um, to be as strong as we are as a community college. I want to assure you as, as a board that there is a plan in place and that the HR team is working together with administration and others um, to move these and other items forward um, uh, through the college and through our process. And we will provide to you uh, a, a formal and in public ways updates to these key milestones as we progress through this work um, throughout the year, both to you and to our faculty and staff on campus to demonstrate our intentional progress as we move forward. So, yes. Um, <clears throat> has everybody who had any concerns with our compensation changes been addressed so yet, or are we still looking at any of them? Or? So I, I think I would say as the concerns come in, we address them. Okay. Um, I, you know, certainly uh, there are times when, uh, when someone is hired um, and they come in at a higher rate than somebody who was in the role, um, and again, it's about... Uh, if we're comparing apples to apples, somebody's in the same job, um, we make sure that if there's, if somebody comes in and we need to make an adjust, equity adjustment, they're making those. That has been, in many ways, our practice as a college. Yep. And we'll continue to address those as they are identified. Colleen, is there? Yeah. Okay. And so that would be my question on your slide. It said human resources is currently making equity adjustments. Do we anticipate that to 
to end at some point, or will if it? If we stop hiring, I mean, there's there's always that risk, right? I, and I don't mean but that to be as flippant. Were, as, right, but for the people who are here right now, yes, those have all been made. If an equity concern has been raised and we evaluate it, and it needs to be an adjustment made, then we make the adjustment. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Are, are we still continuing to get those from what would be like two months ago and the understanding of what is going on? Colleen, do you Does want that to? Does that make sense? Yeah. I, no, quite right. There were concerns months ago. Yeah, there were have concerns months now? ago, and so all of those have been addressed to this point to that you're aware of. Yes, okay. To my knowledge. Okay. All right. I, I think to as what's ongoing is sure. as we hire new people, yes. we and to look at yes. the department Yes, That's correct. And I did not take it flippantly. Yeah. I do understand <coughs> what you're saying yeah. in the future. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Any other questions? All right, and I will keep moving along. Um, next, there have been a, a number of, of uh, key searches underway that are either at leadership positions within the college or impacting the uh, president's office. Um, and so if you advance to the next slide, um, again, you just met this evening, or some of you met uh, during the tour of the classroom lab building renovations. You had the opportunity to meet Heather. Um, in addition, um, the CIO process, we've extended an offer um, and we're waiting for that process to run out. Um, for the executive vice president for student success and engagement, um, we finished interviews last week and we're compiling the feedback from across the campus um, and evaluating that feedback in light of a decision ahead of us. And then finally, um, in the president's office, um, the position that will be uh, made vacant when a chain of events happens when Terry Schlisch uh, retires and then uh, Caitlin uh, Murphy were, moves into that role, as we've discussed previously, that leaves the vacancy in her position behind, um, and we are um, in the final round of interviews actually this week. Um, so those are some of the key searches as they relate that you would interact with um, at some, some level. Um, and then, all right, let's talk goals. Um, and again, as was stated earlier uh, by uh, Trustee Ingram, um, I presented the goals as draft last month, and then at Committee of the Whole, we reviewed those. And again, I've met with each of you individually um, and, um, and incorporated much of that feedback into the goals um, that um, I am suggesting um, would be good goals to measure my effectiveness as a leader. Um, in each of these four goals, I've sought to blend together um, the goals that you should hold me accountable to that also move us forward in the key priorities for us as a college relative to enrollment, relative to you know, both the makeup of, of uh, ongoing or current students, as well as new students into the college, as well as our recruitment and retention efforts. That affects, well, that frankly, it needs all of us uh, as a college to be working towards those, but I have a specific role um, in that and setting the expectation and making sure that we have the tools and resources to do that well um, in engaging our school district leaders into deeper relationships um, that ultimately impact um, access to college now, um, as well as matriculation from high school to Johnson County Community College, as well as understanding the needs of our regional employers across many different sectors as identified here, and then balancing the implementation of our strategic plan while also working to more fully engage um, in, in positive and meaningful ways our faculty and staff. And so these are the goals that, that um, we've worked on over the last uh, couple months, um, and I bring them to for your consideration. If we were to flip through the slides, um, the next, we'll just slowly work through this. I'm not gonna read to you, but we've established criteria. We'll go back this one, I'll just work through slowly through this. Um, that each of these goals has identified a way by which we can uh, measure uh, the extent to which I'm accomplishing uh, these goals. So both from um, the strategic enrollment goal, which was the first one, strategic enrollment management, the second one being um, the um, relationship, you can go ahead and move forward, um, with our superintendents um, in seeking to find ways to um, you know, reduce um, barriers and or challenges 
um, to uh, ongoing concurrent enrollment. Um, the third around how I engage with area employers um, in understanding that need and feeding that information back to our programs, which is the next slide. And then the last one, which is really the commitment to um, both our employees and the strategic plan. And so those were the four goals that I have for your consideration um, that we would ask for you to act on, or I would ask for you to consider um, in old business. So I'll stop there before I talk about the professional development goals. So are you wanting comments? I, I, I'm stopping, pausing here. Trustee. If there's a, yes. For the quiet one who didn't used to talk very much. <laughs> um, the, the one thing, and I literally just wrote it down. We have discussed this. We have talked. So I'm bringing up, the, what about our homeschool population and our private schools? I literally, that's yeah. just what I wrote yep. down. I, yep. I literally was sitting here listening to you and thinking, yep. I think there's a huge, I mean, we hear so many students, mm -hmm. particularly who have been homeschooled, and I know that there are some avenues and, and pathways, um, you know, I would ask you to consider including mm -hmm. those, too. Well, and, and I that's think that's however you all feel. Where, when you said you wrote it down, can you? Well, no, I just under engaging the superintendents and trying to strengthen those relationships that there's got to be some. If I could, we already do that. Okay. We actually have agreements with the homeschool network. We, for Thank this you. year, for the first time, we actually offer early college chemistry because one of the instructors in their pool actually is an adjunct here, so we were able to make the agency <coughs> qualifications work. So we've extended that work over the course of the last three years very successfully. If, if I may. Mr. Vice President, yes. for, for all of our viewers and listeners at home, could you please identify yourself? Uh, uh, Mickey McLeod, Executive Vice President of Academic Affairs here at Johnson County. <laughs> and I stand corrected. Thank you. Madam Trustee, Trustee Red Time. Uh, President Bound, how yes. often do you plan to review your uh, progress on these goals with us? I, I would do it. I think the way we can somewhat have it set up now would be on a semi-annual basis. Um, I don't know that we've set that. I think that's uh, what I would look to you. I would like to see quarterly. Sure, it's it's a good point. I mean, historically, we've done it annually. I think recently we started doing it semi-annually. Um, because first year, maybe we did semi-annually. Yeah. We had a months. discussion last year, mid-year. Yeah. Sure. Um, are, you, are you making a motion, Trustee? Just, just a comment. You just consider what makes sense. Yeah. And you meet with him monthly. Mm -hmm. So we have we have that opportunity, and I think it's a good point. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. McLeod, thank you for your input. Thank you. Because as the U.S. Supreme Court says, and, and someone generously donated a book to us tonight, uh, the U.S. Supreme Court has ruled that parents have the fundamental right to educate their children at home. So we thank everyone for their input here, and we welcome the input of everyone here. So thank you, Dr. McLeod, for so graciously and pointedly pointing out that esoteric point. Thank you. I do esoteric points very well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even sure I used it right, but you did. I worked it in there. Thank you, Dr. Bounds. All right, and then the professional development goals, again, uh, wanting to make sure that we keep me well connected to it's a next slide um, which is actually the last slide in my presentation um, the professional development goals focusing on keeping me well connected to uh, the national thought leaders um, and those who are implementing some of the, the high impact practices that that drive student success for all students um, and in seeing what's coming from a, a long-term standpoint for community colleges, including um, the fact that I'm uh, a fellow in the Aspen New President's Fellowship. Um, I'm incredibly honored to have that opportunity um, as one of 26 presidents in the United States. Um, to also to attend the ACCT Leadership Conference um, uh, in the fall and the Legislative Summit with you trustees. Um, or at least representatives from this group um, uh, in the fall and in the uh, winter.
to attend uh, the League for Innovation's annual conference. Uh, as you recall, um, we're, we're going through, and I expect um, next month we will be formally um, reinstate, re um, affirmed as a League uh, board member college to attend their conference, and then finally the AACC, that's our national association of community colleges, their leadership conference in April. And um, again, these are, are my proposed goals, both from a performance standpoint, as well as a, a professional development standpoint uh, for this current fiscal year. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Dr. Bowne. Any other questions, comments for Dr. Bowne here? Can I offer a trivia question? Yes, ma'am. It's Madam. really more of a just trivia effort. It's your birthday. Why not? The group, right. I mean, I, that's, I was hoping you would say something gracious. Thank you. Um, does anyone know why the Hispanic Heritage Month celebration starts on September 15th and goes to October 15th as opposed to being a month of just one or the other? Yeah. Anybody? Anybody? Bonus points. I have a cupcake or a cookie I'll give you if you know. It's because the, today um, begins the first Independence Day. So today is the day Mexico um, became independent from Spain. But then throughout the month from September 15th to October 15th, all of the Latin American countries celebrate their independence. So they are literally, there's like 15th, 16th, and 18th of September. And then they're kind of sprinkled throughout. And so we celebrated around that because that is the Independence Days for each of those countries, many of them from Mexico. They've gained their independence from Mexico. But it's important to know that that's why it's a month that laps over two months, and that part of that and understanding is the culture around the independence of who with their colonizers at different. Um, we, we always talk about our, you know, those people across the pond that lost a fair lady this week, but um, that was our independence. But there are other countries that celebrate a totally different independence of another kind. So there's your trivia for the night. May, may it win you many things at a trivia night. I've almost forgotten the Queen had died. Thank you, you for You're that. welcome. <laughs> I wanted to try to get that in, too, so I did, too, for... Uh, any other questions for Dr. Bannon? Uh, I will say, uh, you know, thank you for developing these. I think we'll talk about it probably more here. Uh, with respect to these, this final uh, grouping, I, I've encouraged you, and I know others have, too, to be as active in some of these associations as possible. I certainly believe we do that for your, your cabinet and, and for all of our... Uh, faculty and administration. So I think it's important. I've watched now, really, I ran when Dr. Callaway was still president. I've seen three different presidents, and I, it's a lonely job. I know it's a hard one, and I know you have a lot of help, and it, it's hard for them too. But thank you for being active and proactive on that, and I, I appreciate your work. Uh, the next item on our agenda is uh, new business, and I will take the liberty to report that collegial steering did meet yesterday on September 14, <coughs> 2022 in the, uh, the Lytle conference room right next door. Trustee Ingram and I attended along with several members of the cabinet, including, excuse me, Dr. McLeod was there and several members of the administration, along with President Cooper and uh, Professor Andrew of you was there, uh, among others. So we, we met there, we discussed our goal, really the only goal we talked about was enrollment uh, perhaps it was my fault or insistence of, of the hard economic and, and political reality of that number as this 20th century institution struggles with the realities of the 21st. So uh, I, I don't enjoy saying that. I don't enjoy the potential of austerity being upon us, but I think it's reality of whoever is um, in charge. So we discussed that goal and we met, and I believe, w when will we meet again? Next month, the second Wednesday of the month, I believe it is. We just we'd taken the summer off, so I'd forgotten. Yeah. So we'll meet next month, and that concludes my report. I'll stand for any questions. Yeah, just to clarify, did you say that was collegial steering? Collegial steering, Thank you. yes. Appreciate it. I probably slurred the, the, the words in my haste to get the meeting over with. Uh, no, having no questions, thank you for that. Uh, old business is our next item and I believe we have an, a committee review of the ad hoc committee uh, by Trustee Smith Everett. Is that correct? Sure. I can. I, it's on here. I don't. It is. <laughs> I don't mean to catch you. No, that's okay. But, but, um, and please, Trustee Rattan, jump in. Is Trustee Whistle I believe he rolled off about okay. 6.30, 6.35. Okay. He had a prior commitment. 
I'm, I'm glad you noted the time that he rolled off. That's good to know. I pay attention, Trustee Smith. There. Um, our, uh, the update is at the retreat. Um, we will bring forth a new recommendation. Um, I will disclose all secrets now. We are recommending against the Committee of the Whole structure in favor of a new uh, committee structure that is a cross between our old one and some new um, structures and ideas that we got from the 12, did we contact yes. 12? Um, different community colleges that um, Trustee Rattan, Musil, and I um, contacted, and we will um, bring you those at the retreat. We expect to have a nice, robust discussion about how the committees can meet all of our needs in a better way and make sure that we're still able to take action so that our um, administrators can do what they need to to do the business of the college. So that concludes my report. Trustee Rattan, do you have anything else to add? I'm excited to discuss the committee. Yeah that we have proposed. I think we're looking forward to it. Thank you both for your leadership on that issue. Any questions for Trustee uh, Smith Ebert? Uh, seeing none, the policy ad hoc committee, I, I'm asking, is that a similar discussion or do you want to take us? I'm going to take hey. that one. Um, we actually sent out uh, a note to everyone this afternoon. Hopefully you saw that and have received that via email. Uh, there are two copies that you will receive of the policies. One is the red line copy that has all of the, the comments and some of the corrections um, on it. And then we have a working copy. So there's two different copies that you have. The note that accompanied it gave us all the instructions to be prepared for discussion. There's a lot of policies to go through. You'll see that some of them required very few changes based upon state statute. Um, some of them will require a little bit more discussion or we anticipate a little more discussion. Um, but the instructions are in there. You'll see that we have actually highlighted some areas in yellow that we would like you to pay specific attention to and really uh, focus on prior to that discussion because we have about, I think it's 80 minutes on that one um, to, to discuss our policies. But um, we're very excited about it too. Laura's worked really hard. I mean, she's worked on the committee of the whole. She's worked on this committee. I just leaned over to her and said, I feel like all I know are the policies at this particular point. Um, but we're, we're really excited to move forward. And we've talked a lot about self-governance in the past couple of years. So this will really provide us with the opportunity to show off our stuff and show that we can self-govern and follow our own policies. So I would, yes. Did you say you emailed? I, I believe it was emailed this afternoon. Oh, well, no, 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 it was put on SharePoint. Oh, okay. forgive me, it was put on SharePoint. But then there was something emailed, I believe. I think, yeah. yeah. There, was, was, there was a separate email. Oh, it says board retreat From, documents. Yes. Yes. Okay. Murphy. That's okay. it. Yes. Thank That's you. it. I That's it. Sure I apologize. Yes, they <laughs> right. put it on SharePoint so that it's available to everyone. Thank you. My mistake. So, anyway, thank you very much. Any questions? I think for we're looking forward to a great retreat and yeah. workshop. So, it's going to be. I look forward to it and thank you both for your work on it. And I, I look forward to you leading those discussions. Has, it, has a retreat agenda been sent? Yeah, but we will. I feel like we, I've seen yeah. it. It's like two items. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe the whole. I think so. We will. Okay. And the policies. Yeah. I, Mr. Chair, just so we, in case we, I don't know if we told you directly. I know we told Dr. Bound and Ms. Murphy, but our preference is to do the committee of the whole conversation first, presentation conversation, um, because the policies will be affected by the committees we picked, and so we would like the committee of the whole group and discussion first on the agenda and the second part be the um, policies which will be affected by that first part so that makes sense and and, and final i'm going to take the opportunity and the liberty of thanking kelsey nazar yes. who has worked very closely with us on the policies so please thank your folks in your department too because you have spent a lot of time with us and a lot of time answering questions and helping clarify some of those things. So thank you very much on behalf of both of us. Yes. Um, my producer is telling me that the agenda for the retreat is posted on SharePoint. Okay, very good. <laughs> we haven't producer. had time to look. I haven't seen it. I <laughs> apologize. Uh, thank you, Trustee Ingram. Thank you, Trustee Smith Everett and Trustee Rattan for your work on that. Uh, the next item on our agenda is the uh, President's goals for 2022-2023. 
Uh, Dr. Bown has presented on them. Uh, I believe you're looking for a motion to adopt them. Is that correct? As presented tonight, yes. As presented tonight. Is there such a motion? So moved. So, I'll second. Uh, the motion has been made by Trustee Coaston and seconded by Trustee Ingram. Any discussion? Any discussion? Uh, seeing none, uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 And those opposed? Uh, the motion passes six to zero. Uh, the next item on our agenda is the consent agenda. Is there any item that any trustee would like to pull out for specific discussion? No, sir. Um, is there a motion to adopt the consent agenda? So moved. Second. The motion has been. Others can second. They're all welcome to second. Very easy. Motion has been made uh, by Trustee Ingram and seconded by Trustee uh, Smith Everett. And all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? The motion passes six to nothing. Uh, I believe we do not have an executive session. That's correct. And before we <laughs> adjourn, I would like to make a motion that we sing happy birthday to Trustee Smith Everett. I'll second. All those, any discussion? Oh, Lord. None. Uh, all those in favor? Please signify by saying aye. 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 Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Trustee Laura Smith Everett. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Thank you. Uh, without further ado, uh, I tried to get us done in two hours. I apologize we didn't get there. Uh, may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion to adjourn, but can everybody please donate? <laughs> Way to make the ask. Uh, the motion has been moved. Uh, it's been moved by Trustee Ingram, seconded by Trustee Smith Everett. Yes. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Yes. Aye. aye. <laughs> those opposed. Motion passes six to nothing. Thank you for coming.